Hey friends, Pastor Chris here with today's Golden Nugget from God's Word. We're going to pick up in Revelation chapter 21, starting with verse number 9 today. We're going to be looking at what's called the New Jerusalem. It's that uh, capital city of the universe. The new heavens, the new earth have been created, and this is the capital city of of God. This is the dwelling place of God's children. This is where you and I, who are children of God, will spend eternity in this place. It's where we will call home, and uh, God will be there in the midst of us. Jesus Christ will be there in the midst of us, and what a beautiful thing it is. Out of all the things he's created, this is the capital city. Now, throughout Scripture, it's called several different things. It's called the New Jerusalem. It's called Heavenly Jerusalem. It's called Holy City. It's called the Holy Jerusalem, City of my God, and the Great City. All those words throughout Scripture is giving us an understanding of this place that we simply just call heaven, that we say we're going to heaven someday. Well, where we're going is called the New Jerusalem, the capital city of God in the, the universe. Verse 9 says, Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls filled with the seven last plagues came to me and talked with me. Now, the Lord has used this angel to deliver judgment. Now he's using this same angel uh, to deliver hope for people who are studying, who are reading and understanding God's word, and just realize the, the beauty in that. The Lord is, is saying, yes, there is judgment, but there is hope in Jesus Christ. And so he's giving us that understanding as well. The angel says, come, tells John this, come and I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. Now, talking about the glory of God, it goes on and says, Her light was like a most precious stone, like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. I don't know if you've ever went outside during a snowstorm or during an ice storm and just seen how... When the ice covers everything, how it glistens. Well, that's what it's giving us a picture of here, the glory of God. It just glistens. And verse 12 says, She had great and high, a great, she had a great and high wall with twelve gates, twelve angels at the gates, and the names written on them, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Three gates on the east, three gates on the north, three gates on the south, and three gates on the west. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations. On them were the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Well, if, if you think about what that's saying there, it's giving us a picture of a square city. And on each wall, pointing in each of the directions, north, south, east, and west, you have three gates on each wall, and we have on those gates, it says that the, it says the 12 foundations on them were the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb, but then we also see that in verse number 12, said the 12 gates had uh, the names written on them, which were the names of the 12 tribes. So we have the 12 tribes on the gates, and then we have the apostles on the the foundations. Now, let me, let me explain what that means. Why would we have the 12 tribes' names on the gates? Well, there's a reason for that, because the, the Bible tells us that the Lord came from the Jewish people. He came from that line, that uh, line of people. And so, to enter the gate is giving us that symbolism of realizing you're entering into the holy city of God who himself came through uh, the Jewish people. And so we are coming to the Lord and worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ who was uh, from that lineage of the Jews. 
And then when you see the foundations there and the, the 12 apostles and their names listed there, that's giving us a picture of, of understanding that we're standing on that firm foundation of trust and hope in Jesus Christ. It says in verse 15, He who talked with me had a gold reed to measure the city, its gates, and its walls. And the city is laid out as a square. Its length is as great as its breadth. And he measured the city with the reed 12,000 furlongs. Its length, breadth, and height are equal. That's talking about 1,500 square miles. That is an enormous place. He measured its wall. It was 144 cubits, according to the measure of a man. That is of an angel. Talking about the the uh, the, the wall, and it goes on and says, The construction of its wall was of jasper. The city was of pure gold like clear glass. So these are massive walls, which gives us an understanding of the protection that God has provided for us. Um, he goes on and says that, uh, let's see, he measured the wall, verse 17, 144 cubits, according to the measure of a man that is of an angel. The construction of its wall was of jasper. The city was pure gold, like clear glass. I've never seen gold on this earth that's clear like glass, but God said it, and it's so. Verse 19, the foundations of the wall of the city were adorned with all kinds of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third, I uh, uh, forgot how to pronounce that, uh, C-H-A-L-C-E-D-O-N-Y, chalcedony, uh, I probably goofed it up bad. The fourth was an emerald, the fifth sarnix, the sixth sardius, the seventh crystallite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth, Christophes, the eleventh, jacinth, and the twelfth, amethyst. I probably butchered naming all of those. Uh, the, the idea is this, that there are incredible, beautiful things throughout that capital city of God, uh, the place we say we're going to someday, heaven. Twelve gates were twelve Pearls. Can you imagine a pearl that big to be a gate? Um, each individual gate was of one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold like transparent glass. So here we have this place called heaven, and John's trying his best to give us a picture of what it looks like, and it is beautiful. It's indescribable, like I said earlier, but he's doing his best to tell us what it's like. Some questions that people raise is, well, what are we going to do in heaven? I have an uncle that I dearly love, and he asked one time, he said, are we just going to sit around worshiping God all the time, or what's heaven going to be like? Well, you have to ask the question, well, what, what's the purpose of the gates? You know, are we going to be going in and out? Heaven is our dwelling place, but are we going to be going in and out of the capital city are we going to be working? We know that God works. He never stops working. And so if we're going to be like the Lord, are we going to be able to, to work? Are we going to know everything? Now, I, I think I can answer that. Uh, I think we will see things more clearly than we do right now. But only God is all-knowing. And so the idea that we're going to know Everything that is like God, I think, is um, a little unrealistic. Uh, God can give us whatever knowledge he wants to, but he's still God. And uh, I believe heaven is a place where uh, we will be working. I believe it's a place that will be complete peace, joy, happiness. We know all of that because sin has been removed from uh from the world, sickness, death, all those things are going to be, be going. Uh, for many years now, I've always said that the final tears we would ever shed would be wiped away by Jesus, according to what I shared with you yesterday. Um, but I wonder if there might be tears of joy that, that would be shed. I mean, there's been times last Sunday morning on my way to church, I was listening to a, a song on, on my in my car, 
and uh, it was holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. And uh, I got filled up, and I was rejoicing, and I was crying as I was rejoicing. And so I wonder if there will be tears of joy in heaven. Um, I believe we will know each other as we are known. Um, I would encourage you to, to go through LifeWay. Um, has put out some, some studies on heaven, and they back it up with some scripture. Uh, I would encourage you maybe to look at that. Maybe I'll go through that in some other devotions. But um, Randy Alcorn is another gentleman that has uh, written a book and talked about heaven, and he backs up uh, everything he says with Scripture about what heaven's going to be like. And um, you know, it's not a place where we're going to be bored, that's for sure. Um, it's a place where we're going to be so full of love and joy and happiness, and, and the Lord is going to be the light. There won't be a need of a sun or a moon to bring us light because the Lord himself and his glory will bring the light to the place where we dwell. Um, it's going to be amazing. I pray that you're there with me someday. Let's pray together. Father, thank you, Lord, for my brothers and sisters in Christ. I pray that we'll get excited about this place called the New Jerusalem, the dwelling place of of God's children that's for eternity someday, Lord, the capital city of the universe, Lord, that you have prepared and are preparing for us. In John 14, Lord, you said that you have, you're going to prepare a place for us, and Father, that you will come again and receive us unto, your, unto yourself, that where you are, that we may be also a brand new home that you have pre prepared for us, Lord. 1 Corinthians 15, you, you've told us, Lord, that you've got a brand new body waiting on us, one that will never get sick and one that will never die, Lord. And of course, it's going to be an incredibly different lifestyle than what we're living right now, Lord, because it will be a place where there's no sickness, no death, uh, nothing that, Lord, is displeasing to you. Because, Father, you are King of kings, Lord of lords, ruling. And Father, we give you praise for that. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. I pray you have a great rest of your day.